Okay, I want to I want to say hi again, everybody. It's only me, Wushu Richard. I'm not going to spend a long time in this video. This is a simple one. I'm just going to finish off with today. I want to say thank you for watching my videos. I'm doing here in the holiday in this basketball court, doing some kung fu, fitness, martial arts, health, self defense, basic training for anyone, as well as the deeper stuff. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to do some more counter attacks. So check out that first video if you haven't seen it. I've done a video already on counters, uh, simultaneous counters. Uh, using the hands, just some I showed a, a, a various few techniques. Where I showed how to use your hands to simultaneously block and strike. Okay, um, using different techniques like punches, palms, chop, back fist, hammer fist, elbows, whatever. Okay, but in this video, I'm going to be showing you some leg movement just very naturally again in a neutral stance. How to parry and block with your hands using those similar techniques. Basically the same, the, thing, the techniques are sim similar, so let's just have a look at that, right? First of all, if you're familiar with basic kicks, you'll know what I'm talking about. Let's just have a little look at some basic kicks. It's very, I've, I've got some strains in my legs where I've been training hard recently, but I'll just do them slowly for you here, so you can understand. Basic, in a basic neutral fighting style, let's say like this, okay, two hands here, four open hands. You can kick with your front leg, the, the lead leg's more near, right, the same as the hand. But I'm here, I can do a front kick. Kicking straight out, okay, with the sole of the foot or the ball of the foot, lifting the knee and then kicking out. I'm doing these moves slowly in this video, so just for you, but put some power and speed when you do it. Um, I can turn slightly on the hip there on the side, lift my knee up and kick out for a side kick, okay, to the body there. I can do that also, or midsection or high. But these can often be very useful in close range, like kicking, surprising them to the um, low areas, like the, the lower the legs, you know, the, um, the ankles and stuff, or to the groin. But uh, it takes a lot of practice in footwork and kicking, okay. Let's look at that number surprising and that's counter attacks, okay. So some of the blocks are basically more or less the same as we looked at before. If someone comes to attack me straight to my my higher level or my midsection, no one's gonna usually go down and punch you in the legs right or the feet. They might go to your groin, fair enough, but if someone's gonna hit my body here, someone's gonna try and punch my body or push me or grab me or my head, midsection or high section, where they're gonna try and strike me. The, the guarding's more or less the same, right? I can keep a close guard here, I can block out like this. I can do the kind of, those kind of motions I told you about before, where if someone's going to swing me, hook me, I can bring my hands out like this. If someone's going to hit my body, I can parry it or I can parry it down, patting that down there. Like I showed you before, for like coming over and in striking, I can parry it across and all those different techniques I showed you before, right? I can come out, I can come in protecting my face here, parrying, basically right, and then work those hand techniques in, elbows, whatever, you might go down and strike, different things, right, before you go into grappling and wrestling with a guy, I'm not so, what I'm going to say here though is, right, strong stance always, good base, if someone's coming in a close range, your legs are longer, right, your legs are stronger, reach, stronger and they've got more reach, but for the most part, always say, you know, you're going to surprise them, you don't always have to kick high or do fancy spinning moves, with your lower or, or upper body. So keeping it simple and something that they can't see coming, you know. You make sure your elbows are in, your knees are in, sorry, for a bit of a guard to protect your groin. Don't always be putting your hands there. Try and use your legs tactically as well, the same as your hand. And if someone's going to attack me, I can simply, if someone comes to strike me, I can parry their, their attack, like their punch or whatever. I can cover with this hand too, same thing, like Wing Chun or just like that, right? Parrying in or out, right? I can parry it down cover like that coming in or out protecting my body same thing when I'm doing that as I'm doing the motions I'm turning it with my heels there and my knee coming in to protect my groin how to do that I can simply kick out low just a simple one there already hand there uh, to set yourself up right anyway this hand's there I don't want any trouble right you st then you turn you don't want to leave your groin open to attack anyway so sometimes you might want to step back for a bit of base there your front your lead legs in front you might be a good kicker anyway on different ranges and heights but the basic thing is he comes up to you he doesn't see it coming he's already grabbed you maybe or he's gonna hear or he's gonna strike you but your hands are to cover you can hold that kick him you know or you can parry it off kick him sometimes you see different techniques in some martial arts styles where people even um, you know, parry and strike at the same time as kicking. So they'll use like one high and one low, like a hand and a foot. But that's like flashy stuff and it doesn't always work. The same way as any of these like locks and stuff don't always work. It depends how you do it and flow it and work it and, and apply it. So if someone's coming at you though, on the side, turning your foot slightly in, 
So you've got that side part of the foot there on the bottom there, on the side. You might parry an attack and do a low kick or a mid kick out as you're doing it. So at the same time, bam. Okay? You might even catch his hand there and like, you know, catch his whole elbow there, or you might grab his arm, you know, even while you're doing that. And you can still do things like your hand still might be there. So like when you when you parry his hand, you might parry his hand down. Don't hit yourself with it, parry a bit to the side, parry it down, let's say. And you can kick him with that side kick, same thing. And this fist is still ready here. You can still, you're still ready, see? So you can hit. Or it could be like an upper guard. So you've got your two hands here guarding also, see? One low, one high. That's the basic thing. Like you might come here, he might throw a hook. And you can block that hook, strike with your hand, right? Or the other, he might try and grab me there. I can open up with, he might try to grab me like this. I can put my two hands here. I can put my knee and strike him with a knee strike. That's another one you can do. So we're just looking at a few here, like it's giving you some open-minded flow with your knees and your legs. Now you've got more power from the back, yes, like using launching that back hand or that back foot in. But it's, it's a longer distance, you know, so if you're using your, your front leg, it's more close. And the same for the hand too. Sometimes, with, with some techniques, right, you might just block with your shin and kick out with that leg. And that foot. You might just parry, or you might do a block with your hand. Someone might come at you, you might parry that hand away and don't stick to it, just knock it away and then chop him out here. Bam, bam, with a hand, see? You might, or you may just parry that and do a kick and your, your guard's still there, you're not going to hold his hand all day. He might come to hit you again. You might want to cover with that hand, so you're covering against any punches that come. So you're in the same, you might move your footwork, snip around, do a side step, block in here. So you're working all those movements as you're doing it. You might grab a hand, do a psyche, that's another technique we find that in Wing Chun, you'll find in Karate as well. Someone comes straight at me here, I might do that, step across, bring my foot with me to the outside, grab his hand, and then as I do that, see, I grab that and then kick out alone to the side of the knee, let's say from here, or the ankle. So it's something like that. So knees can come on the inside. You don't want to leave yourself wide open there and launch a knee and your groin's open to attack or do some spinning kick and that you, you launch, you know, it's in the wrong angle and you end up getting hurt. And come straight into that your open area the same as you can with them. So don't leave your guard open and make sure you've got good control, upper and lower body, balance and stability. Every time you lift one leg up, you know, it's not like a dog pissing, you know. And when you lift your leg up, it's like, you know, really, um, it's like, you know, um, you, you sacrificing your balance, you know, compromising your balance. You've got better to have stability on both legs. And you might want to be on your toes sometimes, light footwork, but sometimes you want to flat-footed, most of the time, flat guard, okay? Stability there. And don't lean too much off balance. Feel your center of balance, control your breath, be natural, and react. Takes practice, spar with people lightly if you can too. But yeah, um, looking more more techniques then. So I can block high, I can knee in, I can do a kick out, I can turn on that hip there for a low side kick or mid side kick. So however I'm blocking, it doesn't matter how I'm parrying or whatever, I can do those. Front kicks, side kicks are great though, I think because you can step to the side, you can work it on different angles. I think side kicks are powerful. But don't go reaching out a mile away, you know, trying to be flashing. You can might be a very good kicker, it works, depends how you do it, you know. But you know, same with any spinning kicks like crescent kicks, windmill tornado, roundhouse kicks, whatever you want to call it. Right, but I'm just saying, okay, um, that's basically it. You can do other techniques, like you can um, cover, cover there. Someone, someone might attack my body. I know I'm not doing the best demos in this video demonstration. I'm just showing you roughly and explaining a few things. But if someone was going to come and attack my body there, I could parry that and do a knee kind of angled to his rib cage. I could pull him in there and do it to the inside to his gut of that. And this is training. I mean, you can face something like a tree there or a pole. You don't have to train on it, but I can work my alignment here. Bam. See, I can, I can imagine covering there, grabbing the wrist, grabbing the arm and controlling it or pulling him in, see? Or just, just covering with two hands, you see? Got my two hands here, I might, one blocks on the wrist, one blocks on the, on the um, elbow, or it could be elbow and shoulder, but you're controlling the arm there with two hands and knee in to the centre of it. Wham! And the front leg, you see, or the other leg, or change, you see? I can imagine just parrying and kicking, that's another one. Just simply parrying across and kicking, just like Wing Chun, see? Parrying and kicking. This good exercise training, you know. Okay, hold on. Make sure you do a little stretching, you know. You know just think, don't always try and kick so high. You can easily grab your leg and throw you down and injure the other leg. So things like that, okay. So you can do a low kick also, like in Wing Chun. You might, you might parry an attack and just go like a low one, like that, angled with your toes pointed out. 
You might do a side kick as I say. So these are basically turning around again, see? You know, go on, here, see coming out. You might block a swing punch or do a high punch like that, kind of like karate, and throw it out. So there's not really a lot to it because the kicks are long ones. You know? The legs are not really shorter ones, you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, it's always kind of, you're more of an advantage, it's a disadvantage I feel. Even though your legs can be very powerful and very fast, I think any time you're doing kicks and stuff, you might be at a disadvantage. It depends how you do it. You could step on someone's foot there, kick them in the ankle area, you know, knee them in the groin or some area where it's really going to be very painful. But it's like you're always compromising your balance when you lift one foot up. So I think it's always good to stand there. You have good footwork to move over and around. Stand there and use your knees to guard against anything like that. And close it. Use low kicks and guards by all means as you're working together. But working with the hands, you know to guard and work because as soon as you start trying to lift up your legs and stuff you're putting yourself in trouble too but you know do work it though basically the same it applies the same as hand techniques i really feel you can do guards you know blocks and strikes with your legs and mix it up with your hands and legs but what i'm trying to say is it's better i think to work your footwork it's like it's good to train it all but i think the most important thing the lines like with hands, you've got straight attacks coming in that wing chun, let's say, okay, you know, you've got the straight attacks, you've got the rounded attacks, like hooks, spinning, whatever, all this, you know, elbows planning, whatever. The same with the legs, like roundhouse kicks and that. You've got front kicks, side kicks, coming on a straight angle there. And when you're talking about the human body, the person, you know, you've got the outsides and then the inside. So you might step to the outside and kick the guy or strike him, the same thing. You might block from a funny angle or strike him with your hand. Whatever. it depends on how you do it but it's basically the same thing you've just got the same kind of angles when you're attacking when you're using the feet the same as the hands that's what i'll say right so i know it's a very rough video it's even more rough and even more simple than the other video but i'll be covering more techniques regarding hands and feet okay and i'll stop this video here though and i'll see you again in another video thank you train hard and stay safe take care now everybody